All right, so I'll spend a little bit of time talking about um, the um, growing trend of risk management for uh, crypto institutions, people like exchanges, miners, um, funds. So over the last few years, we've seen a, a growth in derivatives markets. Um, as you can see, um, futures has stabilized at uh, quite high daily volumes. It's probably the most um, daily traded product in the crypto industry. Um, and we've also seen uh, uh, options, uh, although starting from a very lower base, um, starting to grow a lot in uh, on-screen uh, liquidity. People like Darabit offering this. Um, and this talk is a little bit, what are we using this uh, liquidity for, um, as opposed to pure speculation? When we look at more mature industries, they tend to use corporate hedges versus in the crypto space, this is almost non-existent. Even though one would argue that the volatility within, within crypto is a lot higher um, than it would be in the traditional markets, and the need for uh, corporate hedging um, is larger. And another thing to observe is that in the traditional financial markets, these type of corporate hedges doesn't happen on screen. Um, rather, they are happening on a bilateral trades, um, where you structure more bespoke um, risk management products. So um, whilst people like GSR, for example, will reuse the on-screen liquidity to be able to structure very uh, bespoke risk management and hedging tools for um, um, institutions. We've been doing this for a couple of years, and we've been innovating a few of the products that we've taken from traditional finance to crypto. Some of these are mentioned here. Um, so what are you using these for? Some of standard options uh, will be very valuable for miners, for example, to be able to hedge their production by either limiting their downside or capping their upside by um, basically earning some extra yield. And rather than just having finite expiries, uh, short-dated liquidity, uh, we can tailor these products very much in line to fit the individual trader or the individual miner or the individual exchange. So moving to a few examples of this. Term puts is um, one way of protecting your downside. And the way that this is priced uh, as compared to a normal European option, which has a set expiry, uh, and the price is, um, the strike price is set by that. Term puts use daily averaging, which is sort of more in line with uh, the daily production uh, of a miner, for example. So we're, uh, uh, we're able to uh, match their production much better than with just standard options. Um, revenue puts works very well for miners that have both uh, BTC and ETH hedging, for example. And um, by combi combining these two into a basket, um, you'll be able to acquire this hedge a lot cheaper uh, than if you go out and buy individual, individual options or put options on um, BTC or ETH. A few other uh, more complex products that also could be helpful would be Bitcoin accumulators, where the investor speculates that the price of an asset will trade between a certain range over a certain time period. So this can be a good way of, accu uh, of accumulating a position um, or getting out of a position, depending on where you are. Um, variant swaps, which probably is the space where we got most attention uh, within GSR, um, is basically the easiest way of getting exposure to uh, uh, volatility. So if you think about Bitcoin, um, it's a highly volatile asset. Um, and most of the people who are within this room or within uh, the crypto industry tends to want to be long BTC. That's sort of the inherent position. Getting a diversified exposure to, uh, 
uh, to BTC is very difficult. You don't really get diversification by, um, you know, by buying other currencies, other cryptocurrencies. The correlation is very high. One way where the correlation is very low is that the volatility uh, of Bitcoin is very lowly correlated to Bitcoin itself. Um, so it's a very attractive way of speculating um, uh, on the direction of volatility. It's also, as we will see later, a very good hedging tool for certain uh, institutions. Extendables could also be a very good way of uh, earning, having some yield enhancement to what you're doing. And basically, with, a, with an extendable, you're sending a swap above the current market price. Um, but you give away the option to GSR um, to its, uh, extend the same swap for a second period. So we put an example here on, on, uh, on variance. So one of the rationales that we have seen is that um, exchanges tends to make money or make most of the money from volumes. So they get fees when um, there's more volumes on their exchanges. Um, these volumes tends to be historically very correlated to volatility. So by selling exposure, so by selling a VAR swap, um, you can aim to hedge uh, your position for times of lower volumes or lower volatility. So in this partic particular case, um, you will have an exchange who sells um, $10,000 worth of Vega, which is the notional value of one volatility uh, percentage change, um, which expires the 31st of March, 2020. And they bought this at 60, uh, they sold this at 60% um, at volatility. So in this example, the realized volatility at the end of the period uh, ends up to be uh, 40%. So to calculate that payoff structure, um, you basically take in the notional amount of the variance. So for every percentage point of variance with a notional of 10K Vega, um, there's a shift of $83 for every percentage change. The payoff structure in a variance basically takes that variance amount and times it by the square difference uh, between the initial volatility um, and the realized volatility. Um, and in this case, with a residualized in the exchange uh, making about $150,000 over a period where um, uh, uh, volatility has gone down and potentially also um, due to the correlation volumes of their exchange has gone down. So they've in effect found a very efficient way of hedging themselves for period of lower volatility uh, and lower volumes. One of the more interesting markets that um, we've been looking at um, is hash rate derivatives um, and difficulty-based uh, products. As you can see, both hash rate and obviously difficulty has increased a lot over the last few, um, over the last few years. And we're tending to see that probably continuing, maybe not at the same rate. As we move, so maybe take a step back. The way that we've currently seen miners using um, hedging products. It's either through lending um, or through just uh, selling Bitcoin puts at certain values. So when they buy new inventory, um, they will be able to mine eff effectively uh, around the price which Bitcoin is today. Um, but to pay off that inventory might take three or six months at the current rate. So it helps them to sell some of their uh, future production, either through a forward or a swap. In the future, we have reasons to believe that with the mar margin compression in, in um, mining occurs, well, that will occur due to some halving and some maturization um, of the space. And we will see hash rate decouple uh, from the price of Bitcoin and other factors 
uh, sort of like electricity price, cost of that equipment, and even sort of facility costs will have a me more meaningful impact on difficulty and the profitability of, um, uh, of miners. So we think that this um, will open for a new tradable market. So the question is, why is this not done today? Um, uh, and one of the reasons is that there is, no, there is no spot market to trade difficulty. And for us to be able to price difficulty uh, to a miner, we need to be able to offload that difficulty. Unless we have a perfect bilateral relationship where somebody wants to uh, sell difficulty and some other person wants to buy uh, difficulty. So who would be these natural participants? Um, well, obviously, we have the miners. Miners should be natural sellers of difficulty. So they are inherently long difficulty. Um, if difficulty, um, sorry, <laughs> um, the, the miners, if difficulty goes up, uh, they will get less guesses on each hash. So fr from their hash rate, if you correlate, if, if you look at their hash rate compared to the global hash rate, basically what it tells them is, how many guesses do I get on each block? Um, and that should give me some form of estimation how many Bitcoin I will earn. Now, if difficulty goes up, I will get less guesses uh, on each of the block, and I will hence earn less. So I would, as a miner, I want to go long difficulty. On the other hand, who wants to go short difficulty? That's a bit harder to find. The most natural shorts of difficulty would be people like um, you know, facility providers uh, uh, or uh, people like Samsung who, produ who produces uh, the equipment that are used uh, for them. However, people like Samsung, it's such a small part of their business, they won't go short. Um, or they won't hedge in any meaningful way. So you can see how this market in general is very hard to get uh, the buyers uh, to meet the sellers. So the real way to create liquidity in difficulty um, is with the decoupling from, from Bitcoin price itself. It becomes a very interesting market to speculate on. And we think we will start seeing these exchanges pop up where you can actually price difficulty. Um, and I did one thing. I did a little example here on Sunday where I, counted, where I calculated the difficulty, uh, where I estimated the next difficulty based on the observed number of blocks that had been um, mined uh, on Sunday evening versus uh, the, actu the actual number of um, blocks that have been mined versus the uh, estimated blocks that should be mined. And I came up with some form of uh, prediction that it would increase with 7.7%. Uh, the new estimated difficulty would be 16.7. It ended up to be, I ended up to be wrong with uh, 200 billion. Um, but still, in the area of uh, difficulty, we ended up getting 16.5. So you can see how this generally uh, would be a very interesting speculative market for people to trade in. With, as I say before, the, the request for difficulty swaps and hash rate derivatives are very large, and I think most of you have heard it. The actual market for it today um, doesn't really exist. Um, but we can certainly see that happening.